come along and learn with me about the floating blue community. Hi and welcome back to part two of the floating blue community. A Guardians of the Deep learning experience. Today we are going to be zooming in for a close up on the blue bottle, a community within the floating blue community. I can't wait. As mentioned, the presence of cysts puts the blue bottle in phylum Cnidaria. This organism is not just one animal, but rather a collection of highly specialized polyp colonies. The pneumatophore, or float, is a single individual that supports the rest of the colony. It is a gas gland filled with nitrogen and carbon monoxide that can be deflated, allowing the blue bottle to sink beneath the waves. Okay, so um, here's a blue bottle. Um, this is a beautiful specimen. You can see the violet on the top of the sail. So blue bottles are actually a colony um, working together in four different organisms. It's not just one animal. Um, you can see here the sail. Some of them are left orientated, left, <laughs> some of them are right, um, and this helps prevent all of them from washing ashore when a certain wind blows. Uh, you can see here the stinging cells, so these will, they've just gone together in a bit of a mush now. Um, but when it's floating on the sea surface, these all hang underneath it and they can attract animals. to pick up blue bottles but you can't they can still sting you. The dactylozooids comprise the tentacle which is used in defense and to detect capture and transfer prey to the gastrozooids. These are responsible for digestion. That means they need to protect the blue bottles. They look for food and they catch it and then they give it to the stomach. The gonozooids are solely reproductive polyps. Blue bottles are able to capture larval fish, small crustaceans and little mollusks. From this floating community, their predators include violet storm snails and sea swallows. They are also eaten by loggerhead turtles and, once they wash up, are scavenged on by plough snails. The stinging tentacle used to trap prey grows up to 10 meters long, but can be contracted to 300 millimeters. What's quite interesting about their float is the angle at which it's held. It can either be orientated to the left or to the right. And this determines whether they'll be blown to port or starboard, left or right. On our west coast here in South Africa, the majority are orientated to the right, so that during the prevailing winds of summer, they'll be blown offshore to the safety of the open ocean and away from the threat of stranding. You're now ready for part three, blue buttons and by the wind sailors. Click here for part three. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel for more educational videos.